Yo, family, how you doing? This is your brother, Vyramir Dees. Part of me, one second. Probably should have done this in the beginning, but I didn't. And this is MT Marathi, everybody. MT Marathi, so lightning. How y'all doing? <clears throat> Let's start off with the uh, the traditional. Peace to you, peace to your family, peace to your community, peace to your ancestry, peace to my community, peace to my ancestry, and peace to the nation that you, I, and they are creating Peace also to the Gothic forces, to the Great Spirit above, to the Mother below. Really quickly, let me explain why I say that. Let me explain why I say that. There's actually a method to um, the uh, ascension that I utilize. So we are a product of our family. So I start off with you because you need the peace. Peace is also something that you offer in order to prepare the foundation for wisdom. Peace is also silence, silence in the mind. So you can receive and you can turn over the information that is being offered. You can also, in that silence and in that peace, hear the ancestors who will also give you information. <clears throat> in that peace, in that silence, you will be able to then transfer what information they give you that may be relevant to the bigger picture to the central location where all that is coming together. Now... You, since you are a product of your family, I must then move up your lineage, which is then your family, to offer them peace also. Because if your roots are not peaceful, if there is not peace in those in that lineage, in that genetic order, then you yourself cannot find peace because you are a product of that lineage. Now, there's some of us who believe, and this is a misconception because of Western civilization pushes this on us, that... If we break away from our families, if we break away from them, <clears throat> we can create our own peace and leave them to kind of waller, wallow in non-peacefulness. This only works some to, to a certain extent. Sooner or later, peace, your peace will have to interact with them or their chaoticness will have to interact with you and it will cause disruption. This is one of the reasons why black people tend to, while we don't have... um uh midlife crises like white folks we tend to find that every 10 years or so something really trips us up and we end up falling down and whereas we may be making a million and a half dollars suddenly our life spins out of control and yeah we're still making money but we are not we're not as together as we as we were earlier because the chaoticness of the other side of our lineage has caught up with us we have an obligation, and I know we don't like to think about this. I don't like to think about it sometimes because it is a hell of an obligation. But we have an obligation due to our ancestry to bring peace to that lineage. Now, this is not sometimes possible in this realm. We can't necessarily bring peace to the lineage of the people who are in our family because they're just not peaceful people. That's not what I'm talking about. When you get into the spiritual realm, when you start really getting into meditating and bringing yourself along to um, open up spiritually, what you'll notice is the peace that you instill in yourself will have this strange effect on your family. And it will have it on a visceral level. Your family will, uh, will, will often act very, very um, disapproving. Um, they'll also test you a lot and you may not look at it as a test. You may look at it and say, well, why are they acting that way? They're acting that way because they're trying to scope you out to see if you're really, really on your P's and Q's. If you are really spiritually adept, many of us are not, but we claim to be spiritually adept. Our egos, <clears throat> recall the ego is something false that is implanted in you will make us feel like we are spiritually adept. And yet, our ego will say, oh, well, you don't need them. You can let them go. They don't, you know, they, they are where you're at. You're better than them. And you will think that until all that chaotic energy comes in and blows you away because you never took the time to climb up the chain to, to settle your lineage. Now, your ancestry is always there working and waiting for this. When you get yourself settled and then you look at your ancestry and you say, we need to bring peace now to our lineage. 
your ancestry will will start feeding you things to make this possible. You and I <clears throat> don't even know that this is possible. And yet, when you look at um, Christian fundamentalists, they actually believe this is possible because it is possible. Indigenous people all over the world know this is possible. You work with your ancestry and what your ancestry does, because, you know, our ancestry isn't the people just who are incarnated. They are people who are in the upper realms. And the upper realms, by the way, are multiple levels. So we have to understand that. So the higher you climb in that ancestry and understanding how to climb those levels, you know, you can use the tree of life to do that. Um, um, you can also use, I think it's the seven conscious uh, uh conscious states of shamanism, which you can actually look up. But um, as you as you understand this, what will happen is these different levels, as you climb, they will start to seep down into the people who are actually living. And it'll start organizing their life in a manner which aligns them, <clears throat> excuse me, aligns them with... Um, um, with this with this new uh, uh, vibratory rate, this peace that you're creating. Now, at the same time, and this is the more powerful one because some of us, you know, we we do a lot of things solo to make sure that we are spiritually correct. The reason why it's only impacting on a small level is because we are doing these uh, on a solo level. So when we start to group with other people, and I'm talking three or four people, I'm not talking about 50 or 60, three or four people, seven or eight people, 10 people who are aiming towards the same objectives. What we then find is the next level is then breached. This is now your community level. Now, this, this is actually something that I was introduced to about 12 years ago where I was reading a book and they were talking about how there were people, there were groups of people who would go on into inner cities and they would actually stand at corners and they would pray. And they did this and they measured it. They did this, they would go to specific corners and they did this for like three or four months. During the time period where the previous year, there was just tremendous violence. What they found was there was a significant drop in violence a significant drop in violence, including and up to small disturbances. This is the power that we hold within ourselves that we do not execute. Something that even the church has forgotten. So when you get together with, let's say, three or four people, and now you're all, you're, you've all decided that you're going to stop just working for the self and now you're going up to the lineage level where now you're working with the ancestry to to bring that energy down into your families what also happens is that attracts other ancestries to now start working because you know we're all friends and if we're all friends down here you know we're all friends up there so now they start working with their friends and their friends say well man this vibratory frequency is is advancing it's growing because there's now three or four people there's now seven or eight people and they're all on the same length we can now this energy is now multiplying we can now take it and we can start touching people's whose lives aren't necessarily connected to this so now you have a center where all of this energy is pooling and now it's starting to expand outward and so now that's the that's the second level and then why do i go to the ancestry because if the ancestry are already involved in this why then go to the ancestry i go to the ancestry because <clears throat> the ancestry now i said there's different levels of ancestry we are we've been working with the ones closest to um uh the earth realm that those are the ones that are doing most of the work that we've been doing thus far well when you go to that higher form to that higher level of ancestry you are now looking at the present as constant the past as ever accumulating and the future as never beginning so now this means that you are you you have a vision that is projecting both ways 
one feeding the other. If you start to make peace with the past, with those things that are constantly accumulating that you cannot change, then you start to create a new future because you start breaking cycles. <clears throat> Excuse me. You start breaking cycles. And if you're going to start breaking, if you're going to start becoming, well, if you're going to start breaking cycles, then that means you're going to start elevating the visionary prospects of all people who are involved in that future. This is the power of what what I'm doing when I'm when I'm saying that. You are now going to start drawing people into this vision <clears throat> who are ready for it, but don't know that they're ready for it. So you can actually spark other people doing spiritual practices simply by unifying with two or three other people and determining yourselves to elevate, elevate, elevate. Elevate. One second. <clears throat> Pardon me, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, cold outside and warm inside, so got a little stuff going on. But um, when you are when you're looking to just elevate, elevate, elevate to hit that ancestral level, you are determining to change the future. Even if you just think that, oh, I'm just working with my ancestry, it doesn't have any it doesn't have any matter. Yes, it does. Yes, it has a huge, huge, huge uh, imprint on what's going on in the future, especially when you're getting together with other people to do it. You don't have to get together with a lot of people. I've said that already. You can just do it two or three people and it changes things. It changes things. Now. Why I then bring it to me is because as a person who is not necessarily in the same geographic location as you, this is that broader connection. This is now saying <clears throat> we're pulling our energy together. As my ancestors are activated, so are yours. Just to explain what that all means. Now. Ironically, that is not what I wanted to talk with you about. Give me one second. What I want to speak to you about is um, something that I've come to realize. Um, I started watching this video, and it's called Dane Calloway is Right, Sonetta is a Mason and a Part of the Boule, Part 1. So I started watching this video. And, you know, a couple of uh, years ago now, I did a video on the conscious community. And in the, in the, in the video, I was, uh, I was criticizing the conscious community for their lack of actual practical knowledge, I think, um, uh, concerning the levels of advancement in these esoteric world. Now look, I'll be honest, I'm not involved in any of that work, but I know enough to know when there's something lacking, when there's something lacking. And what I want to say is somewhat to the conscious community and to other people who are kind of um, getting off on watching this stuff, especially as the conscious community seems to be um, blowing itself apart there is a there's a plan that was supposed to be executed the um hope you kind of talk about it and you can find remnants of it all over the world where certain groups of people were supposed to do certain things to teach to the rest of the world the european according to the hopis was supposed to be kind of the the gatherer of knowledge that they would then distribute all across the world that's what the European was supposed to be. Um, the, obviously, that was something they couldn't handle. But when we talk about the Masons, when we talk about these secret societies, we have to understand something. A lot of what 
has become known as the secret societies today, and really for the last seven, eight hundred years in Europe or more. And the Catholic Church was the starter of this, so you could go back thousands of years now. Is a composite. It's a composite of other people's traditions, other people's esoteric traditions. There is not one iota in the in the quote Masonic lodges that comes out of your well i shouldn't say none because when the moors went into europe and they started teaching them to build these masonic orders they did utilize um uh ancient practices that were specifically europeans to kind of start them off and then and then um to kind of accelerate them they, well, not to kind of accelerate them, but to accelerate them, they moved from that point to other points. Um, and by other points, I mean um, they gave them other organs from other cultures to build, to build within their own. This concept was taken, um, and many... Uh, excuse me, this concept was taken and as imperialism expanded, um, one of the chief reasons for imperialism, which is not recorded in your history books, is they wanted to collect as much esoteric knowledge as possible so that then they could try to reproduce what the Moors had started producing in Europe. Because when they kicked out the Moors, the Moors burned a lot of their books. Not only burned a lot of them, but destroyed a lot of them. And and some of them were hidden, but um, they also took some of them and went to other parts of the world, which is one of the reasons why imperialism was so um, so uh, important, because they were trying to get back that information. They were trying to continue to work that the Moors had stopped doing when they figured out that <clears throat> they were being betrayed. Um, Shakespearean language is a, pardon me, y'all, pardon me, sorry. Shakespearean language is a product of the esoteric work of the Moors. But they were trying to continue that so their civilization wouldn't slide. Their civilization has been sliding since then. As they went across the world, they took up all of these esoteric practices and they infused them into their own and then created degrees for them and said, oh, yeah, you know, these are these are Masonic um, or these are, you know, Templar or whatever they wanted to call them. And then they would utilize they would wear the specific headdress or the clothing to symbolize themselves being initiated into those new esoteric teachings. I say this because um, it is possible for a person to wear something that is, yes, it's Masonic because it was stolen, um, but also not to be Masonic. So, for instance, one of the things that, I don't know what they're called, they wear these buffalo hide hats with the horns. This is something that was taken from, if my research is correctly, Native Americans. Uh, they took it from Native Americans. And they incorporated it because it gave them a specific power. So we have to stop looking at things that were not originally Masonic as Masonic. There's a whole history of black masonry, which is true black masonry, which white people have stolen, which none of you understand ex exists because it's never been written. Um... That was how we were able to come out of slavery and build whole towns and whole communities without without breaking a sweat. Because we had a Masonic tradition that we kept alive in those backwoods. So when, you know, they would talk about us not going to bed, you know, for three or four nights, it's because we were doing our traditions and we were passing information to one from one generation to another this is kind of they they have actually interrupted that from occurring 
And we need to really get back to resurrecting that because um, what they did take, they're, they're misusing it. And, you know, the folly of their misuse is about to come upon them. We don't want to be there when that happens. So I want to thank you guys for listening. Um, questions, comments, concerns, leave it below. I'll see y'all later. Peace.